Okay, next dinam in uh, the dinam of brachis is it's called the bracha of making a smell and so, a bracha for good smelling things. Now, it's interesting by food, there's a bracha before eating and after eating. But by samim or things like that, there's only a bracha before. You can have Saturday night, you make avdal, you smell very many psamim. Why is there no after bracha for like the, by food? There's a bracha before, bracha after. So you should make a bracha before and after. So Shkhanarach it says that because nish, the reyach smell, the Gemara says, Davish and Shaman Nehen is by. It's not a bodily enjoyment, it's an enjoyment for the Nishama. And because it's enjoyment for the Nishama, it doesn't, it's not a lasting, it's not a lasting thing. When you eat food, even after you finish eating, there's a remnant of the food. You, you know, it's still in your system, blood, flesh, you gain weight, whatever it is. But Reach, once it's over, it's over. So there's no after bracha and things of smell, just the... Now, if something is there just to remove a foul odor, that's the purpose of it, so then obviously there's no bracha on it because it's not there for a good smell. It's there just to remove a bad odor. So then you wouldn't make a bracha at all on it. So just like it says, in fact, the, the Gemara learns it out because the Pasuk, the last Pasuk in Tilim says, Kol HaNeshama Tahalol Yudke. Every Neshama will praise Hashem. The Medrash says, interestingly, it doesn't only mean Kol HaNeshama, it doesn't mean every Neshama. The Medrash says, I'll call Neshima Uneshima. And every breath that you take, Kol HaNeshama, every breath you take, Tahalol Yudke, you should praise Hashem. But the simple meaning is, Kol HaNeshama, the Neshama also praises Hashem. Smell is something that the Neshama benefits from. So therefore the Gemara learns out, you have to make a bracha even on things that uh, are good smell. Okay, now, what bracha is? So there's various different brachas the Chazal Institute. For instance, if it's something that's like a bark of a tree, then you say, Atzei Psamim. If it's a grass, or a plant growing, it's Izbe Psamim. There's various different uh, brachas that you say. And by Svadim, they're very particular. You say Izbe, Atse, you know, the various different brachas. Um, it's interesting because by Halacha, if you made the wrong bracha on the other one, let's say on uh, something from the tree, Atse, you're supposed to say Atse, and you say Izbe, you're not Yetzer. If you said something that's supposed to be Izbe, and you said Atse, again, you're not Yetzer. But there's a bracha that's a general bracha for psalmim, and that's barimine psalmim. If you make barimine psalmim on everything, then you're yaitzim. There is an opinion, now the Rebbe doesn't hold like this, but there is an opinion that says, by the way, if you make a shahakol near bidvare, and, and any psalmim, it's bidiyavid good. Because, again, shahakol near bidvare, everything was, came about through Hashem's mouth, through his speech. So, but the al Rebbe doesn't quote that then, and probably it wouldn't be Yetzir. So, but, so again, it, that's why, but generally by the Ashkenazim, they usually just make Burmese and Epsomim, and that's it. Now, what? They're lazy. No, because you have to figure out, is it a tree, is it a grass, you know? Huh? It's on tape. It's not a problem. He says like this, how are you supposed to know if, what's that? He says, what's that? how are you supposed to know uh, if it's a vegetable or a grass? So he says like this, if it's hard and it stays from year to year, then it's atse. And those that it's soft, then, it, you know, then it's izbe some. That's the general rule. Um, okay, what happens if none of the above, so then you make a bermanip some. Um, okay, that you not yet. Uh, okay, um, now. Why can't you say it on perfume? You could say it on perfume. In fact, uh, there's a din. What happens if a guy walks into a perfume store? A guy walks into a perfume store. So technically, you make a bracha. You can make a bracha because it smells good. Now, the storekeeper, interestingly, He's in and out the whole day. So the Allah is, he only makes it the first time he comes in in the morning. First time he comes in in the morning, he makes the bracha. But if it, in fact, there's a whole discussion earlier about uh, if somebody's smoking a cigar pipe 
or cigarettes. Uh, why, why is there a bracha on that? They all pass and there is no bracha uh, on uh, cigarette smoke, pipe smoke, cigar smoke, marijuana. That stinks, but anyway, but uh, there is no uh, good, sm- the, you don't make a bracha on those things. Technically, if there's nothing else, yeah, if there's no, the custom is to use clothes, by the way. I don't know where the custom came from, but that's the custom. But uh, if somebody, yeah, if somebody doesn't have, uh, you could take a jasmine leaf or, you know, and a rose or something like that. You can do it uh, for Saturday night also, or any time. You walk into a place. By the way, you walk by, and sometimes there's a jasmine bush, yeah? And you're walking down the sidewalk, there, there's a jasmine bush. And taco smells good. So then, then you can make a bracha. You're supposed to make a bracha. Either probably is bepsamim or whatever it is, or you can make very many bepsamim, yeah. If somebody wants to smell something, so what happens if you don't know if it's going to smell good or not? You don't know. So then you can't make a bracha because it might be a bracha in vain if it doesn't smell good. But something that gives off a good smell, you have to, halachically, you have to make a bracha. No, you brach, something you have to make before. Even food, by the way, if you're in the middle of eating, you can still make a bracha. But if somebody finished eating, right, that a fruit, they didn't make a bracha. Now they finished the fruit, you can't make a bracha pure eights on the fruit, you finished eating already. What? Well, what? Yeah, that's if it's, they say, if it's a fruit that's edible, even if it's together with other things, then you make either a noisen, a shenosan, the Alter Rebbe says a shenosan, a reach table But over there, it's only if your intention is to smell it. But if your intention is to eat it, and meanwhile you're picking it up to eat and it has a good smell, then you don't make a brach on the smell. But uh, for instance, an esrig, the people don't, but if you pick up an esrig, and it has a good smell, l'chari, you should say this bracha, or very minip, some of them at least. Uh, people don't, I don't know. Because I guess because mitzvahs no, love no, London. Uh, what? People, when people bring like some pesame or the young people. Yeah. So if you smell it, you make a bracha. Right. You wait 20 minutes after, you want to smell it again, you make another bracha? No, if you have in mind that you're going to be doing it throughout the day, and you're in the same place and the same thing, you don't have to keep making a bracha. But sometimes they have this... They have this, this really strong stuff, not stamp some and they, huh? Smelling salts. Smelling salts, yeah, those, that type of stuff. So that you don't make a bracha, and it doesn't smell good. It wakes you up, maybe, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not there for a good smell. It has to be there for a good smell. So let's say if somebody doesn't like the smell of cinnamon. So then flowers. you shouldn't make a bracha. <laughs> what? Flowers also, you should make a bracha. If you have roses, you walk by a rose bush, you take a rose and smell it, you should make a bracha. Is it, is it based on liking or not liking or smell? Well, it's again, if it has a good smell, you make a bracha. But if this guy says it's a lousy smell... It doesn't matter, it's just... I don't know, it could be. I don't know, it could be. What if you, you say See, eating is something else. Eating, your body benefits whether you like it or not. Bracha and food is not only if you like it or not. Food is, you make a bracha if you're eating it. You can hate it and, the, and despise it, but you're eating it, you still make a bracha, right? Except on water. But uh, other if smell is uh, depending on the smell. If you like the smell, you make a bracha. If you don't like the smell, maybe you don't make a bracha. Is it only the first? What? Is it only the first sniff? Then you can go back and smell, make a bracha and smell it, yeah. Yeah. What? Are you his uh, spokesperson? <laughs> yeah. So you say the bracha and you smell it, it doesn't have a smell. Then you have to say, Bar Shem Kvei Machus, So should you smell it first and then if you want, if you need to know if it has a smell or not, you can smell it a little bit just to see if there is, and then you can make a bracha for enjoying the smell. What? And then smell it again. What? 
It depends. If it lasts from year to year, the, the branch of it, and you see Atip, some stand Isbib, some in. I tried before you walked in. I said, uh, generally speaking, Ashkenazim usually just make very many Ipsum. Again, because they're lazy. I think a bit of efficient. Okay, next brach over here is the brach of Shechianu. Uh, okay, now the, the Mishnah bracha says um, if you see a good, a new fruit, or if you see this, if you see that, you make a bracha Shechianu. The pearl, the Allah is practically speaking, you don't make a bracha when you see the fruit. The custom today is to make a Shechianu when you eat the fruit, okay? Now what's this concept of making a bracha, shachianu? Anything that brings uh, enjoyment to the person, satisfaction to the person, so then you make a bracha, shachianu. Um, if it's, uh, okay. Now if it's good for him and others, then you make a teva meitim. Now generally speaking, shh, generally speaking, the boss can write, that today you see people are not so particular in these types of brachas, and they write a lot of these types of brachas are optional. I'll give you an example. In Shekhanarach it says, if you see an ocean, a big ocean, you have to make a bracha. Okay? Today, everybody in California, nobody makes a bracha every time they go down the Pacific Coast Highway, or uh, you see the ocean, because it's a common occurrence. I mentioned this a uh, number of times already. You know, when you fly overseas, you make a gomel, right? We make a gomel overseas. Uh, some people make a gomel every time they go on the airplane. Okay? Why do we make a bracha when you go overseas? Because the Mara says, uh, if you go in on the ocean with boats, it was a dangerous, years ago, it was dangerous, dangerous traveling by uh, boat. So you have to do the bracha goimu, okay? So then the question is, what happens if you don't go into the ocean, you're flying over the ocean? So the pearl, the minig is in most places that overseas, you make a, a new bracha. Unless if it's very common occurrence, okay? But l'chay, if you think about it, when you fly from New York to California, or California to New York, you're flying over a desert. What are the things you bench game for is heichel midbaris. You go over a de- in a desert, just like you go in the yam, you make a gaimel. When you go through a desert, it was also dangerous. Years ago, it was very dangerous. So you make a gaimel. So l'chayda, the question is, if you fly from New York to LA, or you go over Nevada, right? So you're going over a desert. There's deserts there, there's, uh, whatever. So why don't we say a bracha of a gaimel when we fly from New York to LA? So, the truth is, when I first came here, the first time, I went over to the Rabbi Reichik senior of Shmuel David Allah Shalom, and I asked him, why don't we bench Gaimel? Why don't we bench Gaimel flying from New York to LA? You're going over a desert, just like you go over the Yam. So he told me that the Rebbe said, it's a Dover Ashkiach, it's a very common thing. So because it's very common, we don't bench Gaimel. In fact, it's interesting. If you go from England to France, you also go across the English Channel, yeah? So the question of your bench gaimo when you go by boat from England to France, or you fly from England to France, uh, do you bench gaimo? And over there they don't bench gaimo either. Because they say it's such a common trip back and forth, you don't, uh, you don't bench gaimo for those things. So it's outside what? Outside, huh? huh? So the same if you fly back. What? Is that right? I mean, technically every flight that takes off from LAX goes out over the ocean. Yes, that's true. But I'm saying, but it's, it, that's not the trip over the ocean. It's just. I remember it was an interesting thing, just a, a personal thing, that um, when we were growing up, every, every airplane had four engines. And they had some smaller planes that had two engines. And it was known that the Rebbe didn't like people traveling on two engine planes. I'm going back in the 60s. Two or one engine? Two also, no. The Rebbe didn't like two engine planes and definitely not one engine plane because it wasn't safe, okay? So then we used to go from Chicago to New York by Greyhound bus. 
We're living in Chicago, we went to the Lenin Yeshiva, so a few times a year we went back and forth. Then, because the airlines were too expensive. Then the airline started was going with youth, youth fare. Youth fare was the airplane, if you were a student uh, under a certain <coughs> age, so you're able to fly standby half price of the airline ticket. The airline ticket half price from Chicago to New York was cheaper than the bus. Bus was 16, 17 hours, the plane was a two hour flight. And there were so many flights from Chicago to New York, American had every, every hour on the hour, United every half an hour, and whatever, there were tons of flights. It was never a problem going standby. The problem was that the planes were three engines. So, because it's not that long of a flight. Now, by the way, all the planes are two engines. Most of the flights, unless it's the overseas ones. So I remember then, it was my older brothers who went into the Rebbe about going on a three-engine plane. We knew that the Rebbe didn't like two engine. The Rebbe wanted four engine. So he wrote it to the Rebbe, my older brother wrote it to the Rebbe, I mean, he wrote it together, but he wrote it. He wrote it to the Rebbe that, uh, this is the story, most planes are three engines today, it was in that time, and we asked the Rebbe if it's okay to go on it. So the Rebbe, it was a settled, so the Rebbe answered, he underlined, most planes are three engines, and it, in other words, because that's a very important factor to it, and he said it's fine. So he's gone three engines, but today, all the planes, even to New York, and most of them are two engines. So again, it's a different type of story. Number one, that's most of the flights, and it's much safer than it was those years, what? I understand, but over there you need a passport, you need this going overseas. It's, it's a whole different story. Machachin is an amazing man, Merabeva, Mayan Kim Shivla Gautero, and then 